Hello and welcome. My name is Chris and today we're going to be talking about Chainlit. Chainlit is basically Streamlit for LLMs. It's fantastic. Really a very powerful tool. The boast here is that they can build Python LLM apps in minutes. I agree wholeheartedly. Very easy to set up with just a simple pip install. And I'll walk you through a demo application that is fantastic to use. So let's say our topic is RLHF, and then we'll let that cook in the background. So there are a few key features of Chainlit. Number one, it lets you build fast. I mean, I agree with this wholeheartedly. It sure does. Building a simple application in Chainlit is very straightforward. If you have any familiar with Streamlit or you have any familiarity with Python, you're going to be able to put together some really cool apps that look very slick with very few steps or lines of code needing to be written. Visualizing multi-step reasoning, it does this. I mean, it, it just does it. If you wanted it, you have it. If you don't, you still have it. It's free. It's pretty cool. Uh, you can iterate on prompts. While I don't think that this is going to be an exceptionally useful feature, in my opinion, I do think that there are some workflows where this is going to be very helpful and allow you to tune things in a way that you're familiar with or want to, and that's going to be dope. These last two features are kind of like coming soon features. You know, it is a fairly new project and it is being worked on fairly actively. So, you know, just keep in mind that these features don't exist yet, though they are going to, and they're pretty cool. Like we said before, the installation is real straightforward. Pip install Chainlit, and then you can run the test application with Chainlit Hello. All you have to do next is make an app. So just like Fast API, uh, basically Chainlit relies on decorators to do everything. Decorators are this little at symbol that occurs on top of these uh, function definitions in Python. They're very powerful things. And that is what lets Chainlit kind of work its magic. Our app is basically broken down into two parts, which is our LangChain factory and our LangChain post process. So in our LangChain factory, all we're doing is we're asking the user for their initial query or their topic in this case. And then we're fetching up to 30 papers that are relevant to that query. We're doing some processing, adding some metadata from the archive API. And then we're embedding and storing that in a Chroma vector store. And then we're setting up our retrieval QA with sources chain, which we return. Once we have that set up, that's our Lang chain factory. So that's gonna build our chain and let us use it. Then we have our post process. This is basically just gonna take whatever response comes from the Lang chain chain and then turn it into you know whatever we'd like. All I'm doing here is adding some metadata so that we can see it visually. It's very clunky looking because it is clunky looking, but the idea is this lets you build fast. So when you're building fast, you're probably building loose. So all this does is add these text elements that let us see our sources. It's very powerful though, right? So basically you can take whatever your response is and then do a thing with it. That's very powerful. So that's it. That's our whole application. Other than that, the things we've done is add some requirements. We've added our chainlet readme, and we've created this very simple Docker file. We're just pulling from the base image of Python 3.9. We're adding this boilerplate from Hugging Face uh, so that we can run our Docker properly. We have permissions to run the files and access the storage that we need to inside the Docker container. Then we copy over requirements and install them. We shove the app into the working directory, and then we chainlit run app.py on port 7860, which is the default hugging face port. So now that we've walked through what we did, which was two decorated functions that were very clunkily and hastily built, and we have this, right? Let's say, what is RLHF? We have this fantastic UI. It's telling us what it's doing. You can rename this. So if we go to our decorators here, we can rename this. So it doesn't you know, have to be that, that clunky name. You can call it whatever you'd like. But you'll see once we get a result that it returns an answer as well as the sources for that answer. And again, this was two functions, very straightforward functions. And we have this boom, ready, right? We can zoom into what happens 
inside each of the sub chains that the retrieval QA with sources chain is calling. We can click this pen in order to see the actual prompt that gave us our answer, right? And you can see the whole prompt here. You'll notice that we are using GPT-4. This is a requirement as the app is built because we're ingesting the entire PDF page at a time as context. We need that extended context window that's offered by GPT-4. You could definitely do some sub processing or splitting on those documents and then have it be compatible with GPT 3.5 Turbo. But for right now, you do need an API key if you wanna just run this stock as a hugging face space. Speaking of which, if you wanted to add this, tinker with it, build off of it, you just have to go to these three dots here, duplicate this space and add your OpenAI API key, hit duplicate space and away you go. You you can run this on the totally free hardware since we're paying for the API costs of OpenAI. But that's it. That's the whole thing, right? The, the, the whole app is just this. And then we get this entire thing. We've got a history here, you know? And let's say we wanted to look at another topic like QLaura. We go ahead and enter that. It's going to, uh, you know, embed and convert to a vector store. Then we can ask it a question like, what is QLaura? And to get, I gotta, I gotta say, with very few lines of code written. So uh, this is a very exciting tool, guys. Definitely suggest you, you try it out if you're doing prototyping or quick things with your LLMs. It's such a cool thing. It's such a cool framework to use. It's just like Streamlit, right? I mean, it's, this isn't necessarily something that you'd want to put into production, but it's very good at prototyping and tinkering. So, uh, you know, if you're wondering what the next step is, you've kind of been playing with Langchain, you've been playing with things in notebooks and you want to get, you know, a little application minded building, right? Hey, this is a great tool to do that. So thanks so much for your time, guys. I hope you have a great one. And uh, if you liked the video, please uh, like and subscribe and we will see you in the next one.